Hello ladies and gentlemen, Starfleet officers and drones of the Borg Collective. Welcome to another Liam Aiden gameplay video. Doing something a little different today, as the title suggests, I'm going to be playing uh, Star Trek Fleet Command for uh, the first time. Going to be taking a look at this game and seeing what it is um, all about. Now I've already kind of done the initial setup, so you're not going to watch me like you know, put in my name and uh, go through all the training missions. I've done all of that. I've got a ship. This, I guess, is my my home station, my home kind of star base. Um, so I'm going to do a few a few missions and just sort of see if I can get a feel for this game, what it's all about, and whether it's something that, that maybe I might want to play um, in future. So let's have a look. Let's see what this is all about. Now, straight off the bat, I'm going to say that this um, the graphics look really cool. That's my station with my my ship right there on the end. The station's obviously still under construction because I'm really new at this, and this looks pretty awesome. Um, it's got more of a sort of MMORPG type kind of feel to it, um, which I'm, I'm really digging actually. Coming from uh, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes and Marvel Strike Force, they're the two games that I make uh, most of my videos on this channel about. This is this is quite a change. It feels very, very different with that that kind of open, expansive universe kind of feel to it. I mean, just, just being able to to see the station, uh, my, my home base like this, is, is a pretty cool experience and not something you get in those um, other games. I will say, and this is just completely personal, uh, just from, from my perspective, it is very Kelvin-y. I mean, this is this has got a very Kelvin aesthetic to it, post J.J. Abrams, maybe Discovery um, and Picard. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, this is the interior of my station here, by the way. So these are some... Uh, that I think is is my sort of command center or something there, and I've got like a training academy, and then these are some industrial bits here, gonna collect those those resources. Uh, this is all a little bit overwhelming uh, for me still here, a little bit, it's a, a lot to take in. I guess I'm gonna upgrade that, I can do that quickly. So now I've got that power steel warehouse is upgraded. I've got some, uh, I think, experience points for that, and then some, some resources there too. Again, this is all still a little bit of a mystery to me. Checking out my ship now. Um, so this is this is it right here. This is the Rialto. So see what I mean? That looks super Kelvin, super Discovery to me. Again, as I said, nothing wrong with it. Um, I do tend to prefer my Trek a little more um, alpha, a little more prime timeline. Uh, so so TNG DS9. That's really where I am on the Trek spectrum. But this is fun. It's nice. Um, I don't know if there are any uh, prime time timeline elements in here, characters or ships, but. Um, you know, this is this is cool. I'll accept this. Um, so I think that again, this looks really beautiful. It's really nice being able to look at the ship this way. One criticism that I had that I, I noticed right away is that there doesn't seem to be any way to rename the ship, um, and that to me is just mind-boggling. I mean, this is Star Trek. It's all about the ships, right? The Enterprise is always the star of Star Trek, I guess. Discovery is the star of Discovery. Voyager was the star of Voyager, but nonetheless, it's about the ships. It's about the people too, but the ships are, are truly center stage here. I used to play a long time ago um, Star Trek Online. Uh, several years ago, I used to play that. I don't even know if that's still a thing. Um, that was fun. That was a true MMORPG um, and very overwhelming as well. But the best bit about that was getting to make your own ships, getting to get these iconic ships, and you could do everything there, right through from TOS, the movies, all the TV shows, right up to um, Discovery they were just introducing as I as I left, as I stopped playing it. And, and you know, so you could have these ships that look just like the Enterprise, used to seeing them on TV, but you could name them uh, whatever you wanted, and that was very cool. I love that very much. I'm, I'm very disappointed that I don't seem to be able to rename this ship. Again, maybe I'm missing something, but I can't find any way to do it. Maybe it's something you can pay for and I just haven't kind of got to that level yet. Maybe it's something you can do later on. You can kind of unlock it. But right now, right off the bat, I'm stuck with the Rialta as my uh, my standard kind of ship. There she is. So back to the to the inside of my, uh, my space station now. I've got some more uh, resources there that are that are being worked on and they're ready to collect. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to upgrade. This is my operations. I'm going to upgrade my operations. So that's going to take seven minutes. So again, this is very MMORPG-ish. I've literally got to wait those seven minutes. But if we if we expand here out to a system view, so this is my home system. So the green one there, that's me. See what I mean about this being very open world? So that, that red uh, Rigelian uh, destroyer there is um, I think an enemy and these are some of the missions that I've got that I've got potentially that I can go on again It's all a little bit of a mystery to me. That's the Norsican ship 
but there are other people um, kind of uh, making their way around this space. This is dynamic space where there are other players uh, right now. Their ships are um, their ships are out here, so I can potentially, when I get to a high enough level, I can kind of interact uh, with these with these different players. All those other those blue star bases around there. There are other players who have their bases next to mine. I'm not really sure exactly how to interact with them yet. If we go out here to to a galaxy wide view, this is an even larger view again of this world so i guess the players are kind of down here and then up here we've got these different factions so i'm not sure about the the purple and the yellow but this is the klingon empire here i guess this must be the romulans up there and then blue i guess that's that's the federation the sprawling yep there's sol uh the heart of the the federation there and then that sort of edge of the the quadrant up there so i mean this is very cool but vast vast what a huge world to interact with and i guess when you get up to to a high enough level you can probably really have some fun here but just off the bat it is overwhelming um and i have to say i'm not sure i would really have enough time to uh to invest in this to to i, I don't know how much time you'd have to invest in this game it seems like you kind of lose yourself in it much more so i think than than galaxy of heroes um or Marvel Strike Force, which I find pretty easy just to kind of dip in and out of. But anyway, so that's my ship there um, in dry dock at my my starbase. I guess I'm gonna go. I guess I'm gonna go after this this Rigelian uh, freighter that that I'm supposed to hunt down or attack or something. Those are my officers. I've got Sulu and Bones. Maybe I'll take a look at officers in a minute. But oh, not Rigelian. I'm sorry. It's Norzakan. Uh, defeat Norzakan. So I'm supposed to defeat these Norzakan, uh, this, this Norzakan ship. So um, I guess I'm, I guess I'm gonna do that. Okay, so I'm gonna, um, gonna take the Rialta out of, uh, out of dry dock. Just kind of pull, pull the ship out again. I still feel like I'm kind of, I'm very much learning how to drive here. But I think if I, yeah, there we go. So that's her. Right. Now she's out of dry dock. Uh, now what I have to do, that's the Norzakan ship scan or attack this is very very violent i feel like the the federation starfleet is not normally doesn't normally involve this much attacking but you know what let's go with it let's see see what we can do so there okay boom there we go that's the firefight and that was all automated so uh there's there's nothing i could do about that guess i blew him up um so that's pretty and then he's he's threatening me. Apparently, this other guy is going to be harder to defeat. So you just kind of click on it, and then everything is automatic. I, I don't fire the weapons. I don't kind of put the shields up. This just all happens. I just sit back and watch. It does look pretty cool. It's kind of fun to watch this. Um, okay, so more threats. Um, independent scum. I think they're calling me independent scum because I'm not part of an alliance. Maybe I'll look at alliances yet later. I did join an alliance when I when I set this up a couple of days ago, but I guess I got kicked, which makes sense because I didn't didn't do anything for several days. But I think that's why they're calling me independent scum. So there you go. That's that's the kind of combat system. Commander, assume we're going to face uh, enemies that are too strong. We're going to need to upgrade the ship. Need to take it back to the station and repair it. And then we can upgrade it. Okay, I guess let's let's do it. Let's just play along. Uh, let's go back home. So that is my home there. I guess I'm level three. Yep, we main gameplay. So uh, I don't want to enter the station. No, I want to recall. There we go. So Rialt is now on its way home. It's pretty cool. You get to kind of watch it fly there. And now it's in dock. So we can upgrade it to increase it. They're going to use components and kind of add these components uh, to the ship. Components that we've accumulated. So this is the kind of the stuff that I've been getting from missions. And then we can tier upgrade the tier once the ship has been those components have been added. Um, so once again, this is my ship in in dry dock. Doesn't really look like it's dry dock. Looks like like it's kind of floating in space there. Those are my officers. Um, okay, yeah. So I can't do anything with them uh, yet. But what I can do is I can repair the ship. Boom, there you go. And then we can add in these, I guess these, these additional components. So that's a phaser uh, bank there, pulsed phaser bank. Uh, that's another pulsed phaser bank. 
that those are the warp engines and this one. They're the shields. Okay, so they said that we're going to face enemies, so I guess I don't know that I'm going to have enough to do all of these, so I guess I'm going to start with weapons and shields, and then if I've got stuff left over, I'll do the warp engines. So upgrade those. Oh, and our strength went up too, from 199 to 210. So this is working. Let's so upgrade that, okay. Um, and then let's do the shields. 247, and then I guess it looks like we've got what we need to do the warp engines, so we may as well do the warp engines too. There we go. Cool. So that should have increased our, let's increased our stats uh, a little bit. So we can upgrade to tier two, I guess now. So let's, let's do that. We should be able to do that instantly again. Boom, there we go. Ship upgraded. Boom, so if we had enough resources, we could then upgrade. We don't have what we need to upgrade to tier three, upgrade those weapon systems. So this is like upgrading your characters, right? It's like putting, so yeah, they, these are the resources that I need titanium. Um, this is like putting, if you're comparing it to Galaxy of Heroes, I guess this is like putting gear pieces on your characters and then upgrading them to that gear level. So you're putting different gear pieces, different weapon systems and things onto your ship to then upgrade it to a different tier level. So, okay, that's pretty cool. So I'm at tier level three right now. And I guess overall with my experience points, I'm at three and that's where you've got that three next to my station. There. So we're receiving obviously a lot of messages. Um, also looks like maybe we've got some, some kind of goodies to claim there. So, Mini chest, okay, some car steel, and then those are, oh, those other ones we had to wait for, I see. So let's take a quick look at officers here. So those are the two that I've got. I've got McCoy and Sulu. Um, I'm gonna just have a quick look. Are there any like non-Abrams and non-Discovery officers here? No, I see, so I see a lot of Abrams. I see a lot of Discovery. Um, and then maybe some other ones that are ones I just I just don't recognize, maybe Picard and other things. I haven't actually seen Discovery or Picard because I'm in the US. We've got to pay for like 50 billion different streaming services to see them. No, these all look Kelvin Plus to me. I don't see anyone from the prime timeline there. That's a shame. Um, and then if I want to recruit new officers, this is where I go. Yeah, so it looks like it's maybe all... Um, there you go, that's a discovery pack there. Okay, interesting. So it looks like I can kind of pay using different currencies to get these, these particular officers. And what I've got here, there we go, that's Bones McCoy. And he is an ensign right now. So he's the cadet Leonard McCoy. So I guess this is a little bit like, and this is the cadet version of Sulu as well. So I suppose again, this is a little bit like having you know, Jedi Knight Anakin versus uh, General Anakin. Um, these are the different versions. I've got the cadet versions that they just kind of give you for free. And then later on, I suppose I can unlock and recruit these additional officers and maybe the, the you know, crewmen, the actual crew versions of these officers too. But right now, these officers I've got, and they've got those skills on the side there. I'm gonna level, level McCoy up a little bit, I guess. Um, but they've got those kind of skills on the side there. So McCoy's a doctor in position. Sulu is big shot and fighting spirit. Uh, so I've leveled them up both to three out of five. Again, not entirely sure of the kind of benefit of that, but I guess what that means is they're, they're giving benefits. There's little benefits on the side. They increase the power of my ship. Okay, my operations is finished. It's been seven minutes. My operations has upgraded. Cool, I guess. Now I can upgrade things further. Okay, I can build an R&D department. I mean, that sounds like a, sounds like something I might wanna do. Um, but first I'm gonna recruit some officers. So uh, here we go. I got these these kind of tokens to recruit officers. So I guess I've only got enough to open this this one, one chest. We beam it in. Maybe it has some officers inside it? Okay, so Sulu, so I got some extra shards, I guess, for Sulu, four out of six. So I got one Sulu shard uh, and one Uhura shard. So I'm a third of the way to Uhura and one uh, Instructor Spock shard as well. Okay, and then some Officer XP crystal-y things, again, that I can use to upgrade people. So it looks like I'm kind of four-sixths of the way through to upgrading uh, Sulu and a third of the way to getting Uhura, the cadet Uhura, and a third of the way to getting um, instructor Spock. Cool. 
Fighting Spirit, yeah, again, so that's the part of the bonus that Sulu, by being a crew member, that he uh, gives my ship. Cool. Independent Patah. We know that you aided the Romulans in capturing our ally. I will sheathe my blade in your skull, unless I can prove myself useful to them. There's a traitor hiding in this sector. Dishonorable, disgraced former member of the High Council, blah, blah, blah. I gotta go and capture him and he might not kill me. All right, random Klingon, I will do uh, what you ask. Oh, wow. Okay, so I, get a, I guess I can bookmark, can bookmark coordinates. Still learning to drive, still learning to drive. Uh, there we go, I've almost got my, my Starship license. So this is a kind of slightly zoomed out view of the system or the sector, and I'm now just slowly headed on my way to capture this Patak. Or maybe I'm the Patak, I don't know. Kind of lost track, it's all cling on to me. This is pretty cool though, it's nice just getting to watch your ship sort of, sort of fly through space like that. So here we go. Commander, I've located the target, but they're arming their weapons. Um, I suggest we do the same. Okay, I guess we're going to fight. I guess this is... This seems to be the way of things. Again, this seems very uh, non-Starfleet, non-Federation-y to me, but let's do it. Boom. Stop this assault, you've bested me. I have no wish to enter Stovacor before my time. You were sent here by Kerban, were you not? He's a coward, a lying Romulan worm. So what say you? Will you spare me further shame? Ah, fun. So now I get to decide how I respond. I can either let him go or turn him over. Okay, so this is kind of cool. These And these are different rewards that I get. So I get to choose. What do I want? More of that steel stuff or more of that uh, green cubey thing. Um, again, not 100% sure which is best. I think letting him go is the, the more Starfleet-y thing to do. So there you go, and I will, I'll just deal with the consequences. That is pretty cool. Uh, again, once I'm kind of familiar with the resources, I'm sure I'd be able to make more of a, a kind of reasoning choice in terms of what I, what I actually want, what will be useful for me to keep upgrading my ship and my station. But, you know, the other option is you can just go for it with a, a kind of RPG it a little bit, um, role play it as, as I just did there. I think letting him go is the, is the Starfleet thing to do. So that's really fun. That's a different element that again is not present in say uh, Galaxy of Heroes or uh, Marvel Strike Force. Um, but this is fun. This is a new dimension that you can kind of bring to the game. Okay, so he's not going to kill me. I just have to do something else for him at a later date. So recruiting more officers now. Um, beaming in. Yay! Spock! Yay! I got Instructor Spock. Awesome. This is this is cool. I'm really enjoying it for sure. And I got two-thirds of the way to getting Uhura as well. And it looks like I, I got one, an extra additional one out of 15, one fifteenth toward upgrading Sulu again too. Okay, this is kind of fun. Back in uh, the Starbase now, let's take a quick look at alliances. Let's see what they're all about. So if I just click on alliances, because this gives me a list of alliances that I can join. Um, I guess that's... Uh, okay, so I don't have any invites, but I can create an alliance if I want, and I can kind of choose a little um, image there, just like in the same way you can, you know, create an, an alliance or um, a guild in uh, Marvel Strike Force or Galaxy of Heroes. So these are the ones that I guess are just publicly accepting members. Um, uh, yeah, and they've got their, their power there on the right-hand side, so a massive range of power here. Um, I guess. I have no idea actually. Is my power just 400? Is that what I'm, what I know? Um, so the Herbal Society sounds like that might be a, uh, particular reference there. Uh, Deep Space 11 for young explorers. Okay, I like the sound of Deep Space 11, but I'm not sure I necessarily count as a young explorer. I'm just going to join um, the Herbal Society. I'm probably going to be kicked in a couple of days anyway. Okay, so I've joined. So it looks like you've got a lot of different, a uh, lot of different options here. Let's take a look at Armadas. Nothing in it. Okay, but I guess you can form Armadas. That's pretty cool. Diplomacy. So I suppose you can. You have allies, friends, or, or enemies. You can kind of map other other alliances that you can contribute to the alliance. I guess that's probably a little bit like contributing to your 
Alliance in Marvel Strike Force, um, I would probably do that if I was actually serious when I actually choose an alliance and decide to go with it. There are, um, you can ask for help, okay, so a little bit like requesting resources, I guess, or you can get rewards, okay, so you can specifically spend currency on rewards to, to share with your alliance. Okay, pretty cool. Again, if I was really kind of going going for it with this game, certain I would I would join an alliance. I'm sure there are great benefits to it. I, I expect I'll probably be kicked from the Herbal Society uh, within a couple of days because I am unlikely to be active enough. So, so far I am enjoying this game. I think there's there's a lot to like here. Um, there's certainly a lot to take in and it's, it's really reminiscent of you know, Star Trek Online with that MMORPG uh, feel to it. I'm going to be completely honest, I think it's probably a little too much for me to take in right now. I think it's highly unlikely I'm going to really start playing this game. But if that's what you're looking for, if you want something immersive like this, if you're looking for that MMORPG kind of feel, this definitely has it. I think it's a big universe. I'm sure that you could, could really get good at it, really get good at exploring it. Something that I have heard about um, uh, this game, uh, Star Trek Fleet Command, is that th there's a strong um, pay to win element to it, that basically you can just kind of pay your way up, get the best chips, and then um, people like like me, I guess, right at the start, just don't stand a chance against you if you're free to play. Um, I think that, I, I mean, first of all, I've not encountered that yet, but I'm really just dipping the, the very front uh, nail of my toe into the water here. I appreciate that. There are, there are depths to it that this, this quick first playthrough, um, they're, they're definitely not gonna, we're not gonna see those here. Um, but uh, I, I can imagine that being the case. I think that's kind of the case with all of these games, to be honest. I think it is the case with um, uh, Galaxy of Heroes and with Marvel Strike Force. That said, I think they tend to do a slightly better job of making it balanced. You know, you can still have a lot of fun in Galaxy of Heroes. You can still have a lot of fun in Marvel Strike Force, even if you are uh, free to play, partly because of this balancing aspect. Now, the fact that this is a more of an open universe kind of concept, I can see how you could run into difficulty. If I'm kind of, you know, once it gets up to the level where you do interact with other players, I think they can even attack you and maybe steal resources from you. Um, you know, if I'm just tootling around in this, in, in the, the Rialto, kind of level 4 ship or whatever it is right now, um, and you've got someone there who's like level level 60 or something, and they're in some, you know, Romulan warbird, um, I can well imagine that I just don't stand a chance, and that must feel really unfair. Uh, that's what I've heard, but I've not seen any of that just yet. So far, uh, it looks like a lot of fun, if a lot to take in. One more thing um, I want to try before um, I end up here, before I finish this uh, little playthrough, is um, what happens if I get destroyed? So we've, we've had these battles um, where I've been, you know, fighting these other ships, and all the things, Klingons, Fragilians, whatever, um, and I've won every time, and I know that's because I'm just right at the beginning of the game. So, so what happens if, if I get destroyed, if my shields fall, if my, my hull gets destroyed? Because I know I've got these little bars at the bottom here, I guess the the uh, white bar at the bottom is the, the hull, I think. So, yeah, what happens if I get destroyed? I, I just I want to find out. So I'm just going to go around, going to find uh, as many ships as I can, pick a fight with them, and see if I can get uh, the Rialto blown up. Let's go. So really kind of running on, on fumes here, I've fought about a dozen battles. I tried to find level 2 um, enemies, which was the highest I could find in this, this sector, and my hull strength is pretty low, so I think this is going to be it. Boom! Defeat. We were destroyed. Little skull next to the Rialta down there. So what do we do now? Oh, you just repair it. It just takes longer. Okay, seven minutes, six seconds. So that was that was a little anticlimactic. And there you go, ask for help. So I guess it's one of those situations where you maybe would ask for help to get uh, back in the game from your alliance members. Okay, fair enough. Was that worth it? Eh. So back in dry dock, um, getting repaired, getting rebuilt after it was destroyed in battle. 
Um, there we go, I think I'm gonna end it there. Um, so final thoughts, as I said, this was a lot of fun. I mean, that is that is really beautiful. It's a beautiful game, it's a huge game, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, the criticisms that I've heard of it in terms of the kind of pay to win aspect did not come in in this, this playthrough, but maybe that's likely. Um, what do you think? I'd be really keen to hear from you guys. Do you play um, Star Trek Fleet Command? And, and what do you think of it? Do you think it's it's got a problem with, with pay to win? Um, is it fun? Would you, would you like to see me make more videos on it? Should I keep playing? Uh, what do you think? Right now it seems really overwhelming. I don't know that I can do it, but if people really want me to, um, I'll put in the time, I'll put in the investment, and I'll, I'll hopefully get to somewhere where we can make some interesting videos about it and maybe test out some of these theories. Um, well, that's it. That's all from Liam Aiken Gameplay today. Uh, thanks so much for coming along, for being part of this journey, boldly going where no one has gone before with me. Well, actually, lots of people have gone before. I've just never been before. Um, as always, comments, criticism, suggestions, welcome down below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, um, a like. I really do appreciate it. It really helps with the YouTube algorithms. And why not consider subscribing to the channel? I drop new gameplay videos for Star Wars, Galaxy of Heroes, and Marvel Strike Force every week. As I said, that's all for Liam Maiden gameplay today. Um, I'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, look after each other, live long, and prosper.